sharing it to your page. I already messed up the title. I'm sorry. It looks stupid. Okay. Going live now. How do you spell both your names? What? It's just, it's just Jennifer, right? The, the spelling is like J E N N. J E N N I F E R. Okay. And how do you spell yours? L A U R E N. Juno Humane. Okay. All right. Hey guys, Chris here with Jordan's Way Charities. I'm having a little fun with the most nervous couple I've ever. Oh, you guys, I told you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw the. I, I, I noticed the um, middle finger in the message to me, so I, I had to get you for something. But no, guys, I'm excited today. I'm here with um, Lauren and Jennifer from Juno Humane Inc. Guys, I have to ask you first. First off, Tell me about your rescue. I also want to tell you guys from the beginning, I am a huge fan. I'm, I'm a huge fan of rescue people. Anybody that's in this field, you guys are extremely selfless people. I want to broadcast and highlight all of you guys and share you to all the groups that I'm a part of, and especially the shelters and rescues I'm partnered with. I want to bring you guys into those circles because I think if we all work together, um, we, can, we can be powerful. So tell me a little bit about Juno Humane. So Juno Humane is an organization that I started about five years ago. Um, we're a small nonprofit. We're not affiliated with the Humane Society. Um, we generally focus on cruelty case dogs for our rescue um, efforts. And we usually do maybe one or two at a time. Sometimes we get a little crazy and have four or five like now. <laughs> um, but we rehabilitate them in our homes. And um, we also, I'm a teacher, so we are you know, um, keeping track of their progress and their um, stories uh, for humane education programs. I have a different respect now for teachers. <laughs> yeah. I will tell you that right now. I don't know if you guys saw my profile. I have a few kids and yeah, we have a different respect now for- um, Oh, because you're homeschooling. Why else would we be having respect for you guys? <laughs> Whatever <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. So Lauren, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. Okay. Where are you from? New York. Are you aware that during a message sent to me on Facebook Messenger, your business partner gave me the middle finger? <laughs> yeah. She tends to do that sometimes. <laughs> how can we punish, how can we punish her in front of people right now? Because that is unacceptable. <laughs> you said it was fine. You're from Jersey and it's all good there. So. I know it was a mistake, but listen, mistakes come with consequences. They do. They just do. So Jennifer, I'm going to ask you to do one thing real quickly that I usually ask most rescues and shelters to do at the end of the videos. For your punishment, can you floss? Can I what? Do you know how to floss? <laughs> My teeth? What? What did you say? I don't know what you said. Can, can I you, what? Can you floss? <laughs> no. <laughs> In my chair, hold on. So, I'll tell you. There's only been one. There's that was pretty good. That was a bad. But there was only one person that actually did that for me. You know, Larissa. Larissa Wall from the Hallmark Channel was. I was interviewing her a couple. Was it last week? And I said, I said, floss. And she was like, okay. And she just like got up, and I was like, like it was just kind of like it was kind of like. It was like kind of challenge accepted. Like that's all it was. But no, that was that was pretty good, Jen. I, I had to get you back for that though. I'm sorry. I had to get you back. It was an honest mistake and I have to uh I have to uh, kind of shine some light and kind of loosen up the conversation. So we're there. What's that? It was late. It was it was late. I did message her late. You know, usually by that time I'm done with regular conversations and it's just all middle fingers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've all we've all made mistakes. So let me ask you something, Jennifer. Tell me a little bit about your dogs. I know there's a dog in that room that um, you guys have. Yeah, so um, we have Sage. She's about six months now. Um, she is ready for adoption. Nice. Um, she has been with Lauren for a few months now, and um, Lauren's been training her. She knows basic commands. She's super social with other dogs. Um, she's super cute, as you can see. She's oh, small, yeah. about 30 pounds, and... Um, she come on. is right here. Isn't she cute? Oh my goodness. So what is <laughs> <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> we're just chasing lizards for quite some time. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. What is let me, let me ask you a question. What is the process right now to adopt from uh, Juno Humane? 
So um, because our dogs have seen the worst of humanity, um, we want to make sure that they only go to the best. Um, so it is a process. We have a preliminary adoption form to fill out to find out if this dog is right for the home that you can provide. Um, and then from there, we meet you and the dog meets you. And then um, we do a trial, like a sleepover for a couple of days to see if everything's good with everybody. And um, from there, it's, we can finalize the adoption. Everybody's happy. I like it. Now, how has, how has you, because you mentioned before we went live that you have a little bit more animals than usual. Is that because of COVID? No, it's because I have some awesome fosters that I've never had before. Nope. <laughs> Maybe, actually, no, I don't think it's due to COVID. I think it's just yeah. um, that I just found the right people at the right time when I was able to get a dog that seems unadoptable, you know, um, either they're super big or there's something wrong with them medically. Um, yeah. Not the easy ones. So I got really lucky. Now, let me ask you a question, because when I first started Jordan's Way in 2018, I was called by so many shelters throughout Florida and around the country. And I think it was like sometimes I and I don't I have nothing against shelters, but I, I just the more I learn about rescues is the more I'm, I'm kind of like, wow. Like, you know, like I there's a big difference. There's a very big difference between rescues and shelters. And one of the biggest things I see when I look at it is the the nine to five mentality can't be in your blood to be a to be a rescuer. Like you can't do it. Why? What? Tell me why rescues are so underlooked today underlooked like under i hate to say it but like you guys are almost like not mentioned in some ways um so the reason for that i'm not really sure i think that there's just so many different walks of life that choose to rescue everybody does it their own way there's no specific blueprint to do it you know yeah. it takes somebody to go out there and fill out the the 501c application you know get a plan together and just be fully in you know i know that when i go and rescue a dog in the back of my mind this dog might be with me forever they might they might not you know but it's always you have to be all the way in yep. so it takes the kind of personality that's willing to accommodate for them in some way you know it's never perfect everything isn't going to always be perfect but you have to be okay with that too <laughs> yeah no you're right um, so let me ask you a question because you got to go into a little a little detail for me on this one. You said it, it does take a special person, and I, you know, just meeting you, just 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 talking to you, I can tell you're a special person. Tell me where this where this started from. Why did you do this? I did this because of my dog Juno. She okay. was the most amazing dog, like just so selfless and happy and grateful for everything, you know. And, yeah. and of course, she was a pit bull. Of course, they get the worst end of everything, and yeah. she deserved the best end of everything. You know, and then I thought there's so many more of her out there that need help, you know, so yeah. someone's got to do it. So how long have you had Juno Humane? Five years. That's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty good, actually. I, I thought you basically just started this. Well, I mean, it's not like, it's not like a huge operation, you know, it's just yeah. like we get a dog and then we get another dog and then we get them adopted and then we get another dog. It's not like, um, it's not like I have a facility. Where right. I have to go to work every day, and you know what I mean. Um, but we're working on that. We just bought some property, so we are going to our building. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I hope, I really hope that you don't undervalue what you're doing, though, because honestly, what you're doing is, like I said, I've been educated for the last year on shelters, and just very small amount of time. I partnered with probably twenty or thirty rescues, and it's like you don't have to do this. You could drop them off at the shelter and, and be beyond with your day. You, you and. Um, you, you and Lauren can just go hang out and get married. <laughs> we couldn't, no. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, um, I know. Bring No, I guess so. I mean, I think it just gets in your blood. The, the, the next one, fuel, this one will fuel me to do it again. And then the next one will give you that energy to do it again and do it again and do it again. Now, did you, did you start like early on as like just like a foster that turned into a rescue owner? Or how did it like, um, was it just was it just Juno's <laughs> life that just foster, right? Basically, I would go get them foster them, rehabilitate them, and then find them homes. But then, you know, some of them just don't leave. And so <laughs> they collect so many before you need to start getting some foster homes um, or, you know, build a, a facility. You know, I'd like to build like a big barn, a rescue barn that is a home that is like couches and TVs and stuff that it feels like it's home for them. Um, yep. And just still stay small though, still, yep. you know, one or two or three at a time. Yep. So again, you guys are out of where? I'm, I'm gonna make, make you say it. So it's Hobie Sound. Okay. Can you say that? 
Hobie sound. I got this. Hobie sound. No, it's Hobie sound. We went over this. Hobie sound. Well, Hobie. I thought you said Hobie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that reminds me of a. I'm going to ask you a question. If you get this, I'm going to give you three guesses though. Somebody last night from Phoenix Rising Rescue out there in. Well, I she was out of um, maybe Milton, the area up North Florida. I asked her if, if looking at me, what I'll give you three chances. What breed of dog do I have? I have three dogs. What breed of dog would you not expect me to have? Though? Not expect me to have. Not expect you to have? Not expect me to have. Mm. If you guess this. I don't, of, I don't think that you have like a dash hound. Multi. Yeah. All right, one more. Noah. I do think you have a Pomeranian. <laughs> like Ooh. a little fluffy, like White. really mean. <laughs> White. That doesn't like anybody but you. Okay. White. I have, I have a, I'm going to give you three more guesses because the dog is under me. <laughs> like, well, it's quiet. Yeah, so I'm quiet. Like a, a beagle? No, they're not quiet. It's, it's, I'll give you a hint. It's, it is small. It's kind of small. Um, that my friends call a uh, foofy, foofy dog. A shih tzu. A golden doodle. Don't, don't curse on the feed. A shih tzu. <laughs> well, you were right on one of them. One of my dogs is a golden doodle. A golden doodle. One of them, but the one under me is not. It looks like him. It looks like the girl, just a smaller version. Can you bring him out? I can bring him out. <laughs> when you said Ho when I said Hobie, I thought my dog's name is Kobe. Oh, it's Kobe. Yeah. From Hobie. Oh. Come here. It is fluffy. Oh, is that a, a poodle? Is that a poodle? You're close. A Havanese. No. I have no idea what it is. How big? What is that? It's a dog. She's cute. He. He. He's cute. It's a Bichon. Yeah, we got that part right. I was talking to a lady last night for 30 minutes and I asked her this question and I said, what dog would you expect me not to have? She looked me dead in the face and goes, Bichon Freeze. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, what? I think she stalked you first. I was like, that is, yeah, I, looked, I looked out of my window. I'm like, what? Like, like it was, it was creepy. It was too creepy for me. Too creepy for me. But she did guess it on the first shot. I was like, that's really nice. That's a weird game I'm just not playing. What's that? What are the other ones? I have a golden doodle and I have a Yorkie. And a Yorkie? I would have, people never guessed a Yorkie and never guessed a Bichon. I, not to, I can't even say, they don't guess any of them. But last night that lady was, they nailed a Bichon really good. But uh, people that are coming on the feed now, guys, um, I'm Chris with George Charity. Charities. You guys know, I'm talking to Lauren and Jennifer from Juno Humane Inc. Um, out there in Hope, Florida? Sound. Hope Sound. Hope Sound. Hope Sound. Hope Sound. We're going to get it out there so good that people are going to be like, that lady's in Hope Sound. Like, I don't know why, when I first saw it, I'm like, isn't there like a Hope something in Florida? Like H-O-P-E somewhere? Hope Springs? Hope something? She's like, no, there's definitely not. There's definitely not. <laughs> 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 no. But okay, tell me a little bit about the other dogs you have, though. Okay, so we have um, an American bulldog named Jet. He is a big boy. He's about ninety pounds. Oh wow! Um, he's a male. He's about six years old. Wow. Um, he is adoptable. Okay. Um, we also have a female boxer out of Miami. Her name is Autumn, but she's not ready yet. She's a. She doesn't like. Um, she's not very trusting of people quite yet. We're trying to get her there, but you know, eventually, hopefully. Um, yep. I have a little fluffy like yours. Her name is Lucy. She has red hair. Uh, and then we also have a little dog named Minnie. And she's like a little scruffy terrier type cute little dog. Sam. Nice. But all oh, and I forgot about Sammy. Yeah. We have Sammy. Well, when I was in Miami picking up those two, the animal control officers were coming in with a puppy that they found injured. So I waited and waited and waited. And then they showed up and it was this little tiny black female little puppy she's so cute anyways her name is sam and um she has an awesome foster home as well so oh, nice. Nice. super lucky to have her she's only four pounds um so she's not ready to go anywhere quite yet she also has a broken leg so oh wow oh wow so do you have a you have a good community down there that helps you if you guys need stuff 
Yeah, um, I work with a veterinary hospital in um, Jupiter. It's called Animal Medical Center of Jupiter, Dr. Rossetti, and they're super awesome. Um, and in fact, Sammy's uh, foster works there also. So, yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. You have to answer it without crying. Crying? Without crying. Don't do it, Jen. If you start crying, we're going to end this feed. No, I'm kidding. But I want to hear your best, your most, like your greatest success story as a, as a rescue owner. See, you could have emailed this to me and I could have been prepared. Um, how many do you do this to me? I don't know, all of them. All of them. I don't have one. Oh. They're all awesome, every single one of them. Oh, uh, you skated right past that question. You did, you did, you did real good. No. <laughs> No, but okay. I, I do want to talk to you about something else, though. One of the, uh, the kind of groups of people I'm interviewing outside of rescue owners and shelter owners is fosters and new adopters. Um, I want you to really explain to communities out there the importance of fosters, in, especially with with your work. So fosters take a lot of the stress and worry off of whoever's running the rescue, yeah. um, and it's a big deal to foster. You, there's a lot of people who want to foster, but they're not um, capable or they don't know what it meant. Or um, a good foster doesn't freak out in the week and give you the dog back. A good foster doesn't freak out really about anything, you know, right. and the ones that are hard to find. Like everybody wants to foster, but once the dog does something crazy, they're like, ah, I can't have this dog anymore. And you're like, well, I just got four more, so now I can't take that one. So. So a good foster is really hard to find, and I think that um, it's a, it's an opportunity for anybody who wants to like teach people how to foster. I mean, it's not the list of things to do. Um, after I take care of the dogs, I'd like to do that. But you know, something something that teaches people how to be a good foster, because yep. a bad foster makes everything five times stressful than they were before. Yep. Hey guys, if you're watching this feed, when you're watching this later as well, guys. Um, please remember to like uh, Juno Humane uh, Inc. on Facebook. And are you guys on Instagram? Yes. What's your handle on Instagram? Juno Humane. She said it like I was supposed to know that answer. You should know that. She's like, Juno Humane, Chris. Like, <laughs> but, okay, Lauren, can I ask you the same question? A success story? Oh gosh. Come on, out beat her, out beat her. Well, well the, the little the little mange dogs, they always kind of have, you know, a very special place in my heart and I end up keeping them all. So <laughs> that's why with Sage we have to make sure that she gets home. Oh. Um so my, yeah. So it's definitely the little mange dogs, but you know, it doesn't really end up being a success story because they end up staying here. Yep. So yep. um but they live a pretty good life, so I guess it is a success after all. Yeah. You know, it's funny. In obviously in South Florida, by like the Miami areas, which I was visiting uh, last week or two weeks ago, obviously the big issue is pit bulls. Um, up in North Florida, the big issue is like a lot of there's a lot of hunting dogs. There's a lot of this like hunting thing going on. Is there like a a big problem? I know you guys are close to the South Florida in Miami Dade areas, but is there an issue around you guys that's bigger than normal? Um, people dumping their dogs just yeah. in horrible, horrible condition. I mean, the dogs are almost dead when animal control finds them, and they just find them on the side of the road. So it's like there's something's missing. Part of the people. issue is just the weather. People can have dogs and have them living outside. So I think that that's a huge part of the problem down here in mm -hmm. the, the states where there's warmer weather. Like, you don't really see that up north. Um, because someone can't have a dog living, you know, outside through more than one winter and, you know, have it still be alive. Yeah. So um, that's definitely part of the problem. One of the things living regulations like homeowners associations and such, it makes it more challenging um, for people to be able to actually have dogs. Right. I'm in the Tampa Bay area. And um, when I was down there, I was driving with a friend of mine and she had said to me, slow down we're on this road. I was like, why? What's the matter? And she's like, dog, this is a dumping ground. This is where they dump dogs all over the place here. And I was just like, is it, I was like, is it a game? Is it, some, is it like something we play? Like, I'm like, what, what are we doing? And she was like, no, this is what people do down here. Like the Redlands, the Redlands area in Miami. And she, you know, they were, I'm like, this, <laughs> this is, this is real. Like, I didn't, I mean, I don't know. Dump, I mean, I'm sure they do it here in Tampa. But I don't know anyone that distinct like, oh, this road is like dumping central. Yeah. 
I mean, that's that's serious. And then when I was going to a rescue in uh, North Florida, the Jacksonville area, I was driving down this road and I was talking to someone on the phone and all of a sudden all these dogs are coming out of the woods. And I was just like, that's crazy. I thought they were welcoming me. I was like, this is great. Thank you for the uh, like, wonderful. Like, what is going on around here? Like, but no, it seems like it's a, it's a statewide issue. Um, and I've been trying to, you know, you know, partner up with people like you and just educate the community around, around you guys and around where I'm at, just trying to show them like, there's a real, there's, there's a, re that's a real problem. <laughs> Like people just dumping their animals. I just think that the that small world that you guys live in, that rescue and I live in, and the, the, the shelter world, it's so small compared to like the rest of the country that just doesn't know. You know, like one of the things that I learned really quickly when I saw Jordan's way, and if you if you guys laugh at the story, I'm going to be very upset with you. You're going to laugh. Um, I went to a humane society where I did a fundraiser. Where I slept in a shelter for like 30 days to raise a hundred thousand dollars for them to to get a new building. And before I, before I did this stunt, they had called me in and they were telling me their story. And I was just like, they were a humane society. And I said, why don't you guys just ask the humane society of the United States to give you the money to do it? And like, I couldn't tell you how fast they laughed at me. They were just like, <laughs> I said, don't laugh. I can't help it. <laughs> he kept it together at least. No, but um, I couldn't tell you how fast they laughed at me. Like, what do you what you think they you think they give us money and I'm like well you share their name like I don't get it like I had no idea that those big companies don't don't help them out and I had no idea that rescues are state funded and I was yeah. like I was like but I but in my head it's like but I've had a dog my whole life how do I not know this like I should know this but like the rest of the world really doesn't know what you guys are so frustrated about for so long like you know like and that's where my my mission comes in because i'm just like i want to do some crazy crazy ass awareness stuff where it's kind of like you know shine some light on things that people don't know about when i got featured on the dota one of the things i wanted to do was just to educate people on that people more people need to volunteer that was one of my big things with the dodo thing because um at the shelter that i did it at they would punch in it or punch in at eight and then leave at like four or five and then like i'm gonna kennel alone for like 12 hours like you know your first reaction is like this sucks like you know like like what are we doing here but like i just don't think people know enough about you guys and you know the work the selfless work that you guys do and then the shelter life and that kind of stuff and you know i've been trying so hard to kind of push push the message out but like partnering with people like you i'm like i'm like together we can we can send the message out it's just it's just a lot of legwork but it can be done um for the for the for the dogs being dumped over the you know being dumped places like I, i've heard the worst stories in the last like probably six months and i'm just like i could probably remember the show cheaters <clears throat> cheaters do you remember that show the guy used to follow the people around they're like they were cheating on their spouses oh, okay. they yeah. told them. like i would want every rescue to put a camera like right out there so we can shame people like it's just like i don't know how you get people to realize that there's a real problem here but it's like it's either shame them or you know just educate the hell out of people i mean what is your take on getting the message out quicker? Like how, how can, if you were giving me advice, how can I get the message out quicker to the communities about stuff that you guys just don't have time to really just send that message out to? What I would like personally is for people to support their local municipal shelter because mm -hmm. those dogs, they're good dogs. They're somebody's dog that yep. gave up to them. You know, and they are state funded, which means they don't get enough money to take care of these dogs. They don't get enough money to hire enough people to take care of these dogs. They rely on volunteers. Volunteers get burnt out because the dogs get euthanized. Right. It's bad. It, it's hard to keep going when the dog that you were trying to play with isn't there today. Um, right. Some connection between the public and their municipal shelter to bring them together instead of this one hating this one for what they do. And this one trying to do the best they can yep. like this clash yeah. and the only one that suffers is the dogs and they're the same dogs that we have you have and everyone else has yep. they yeah. just ended up there it's like yep. not their fault you know so some kind of connection there you know well yep. we can't rescue them all but everybody can do something yep that there's a big misconception about the local shelters and i think like you know a, a big pet peeve of mine is the term kill shelter because mm -hmm. it's not a kill shelter it's an open admission shelter right. you know the the local shelters they have to take in anything that walks through their door and of course they have to make some really hard decisions and that must be horrible yeah. um for the kennel staff that have you know that has to do that and i think that a lot of um 
you know, some of the larger animal welfare fair organizations, you know, the, all the terminology that they kind of spew out and that the public has really um, taken a hold of, I think that it, you know, at the end of the day, it does really hurt the animals and it, it, it really gives people a misconception um, that, yeah, it does not help the cause. Yep. I, um, what's that? Another thing that uh, kind of gets me a little bit about the dogs in the county shelter is that they they come there happy and not knowing what's happening. Okay, so after a week of hearing that constant bark and people walk by and them not knowing what am I doing, they do start to get behavior issues and it's it's like a kennel thing that affects them. Yeah. And the next thing you know, this dog gets euthanized because of behavior in the county shelter. It's because they're in the county shelter and if someone had helped to get them out quicker, then it would have yeah. happened. So it's not their fault that yeah. people's fault. It's that no one came and got them yet. Like yeah. come and get them before it's too late. You know, it's like or don't dump them. <laughs> well that, but they're going to. So <laughs> There's a few stories that always catch me. Um, your this feed here is going to be on a few shelter and rescues pages um, after we're done speaking. But one of them that's going to be on is my friend Ralph, who is in North Florida. He has a senior dog rescue. But before he did that, he he started a senior dog rescue because he used to work at a county, you know, county shelter, and he used to say he's like some of the stuff that I saw, Chris. I would just love to have had a camera on. He's like, you know, when a dog gets you in that in a particular place he was at, he had said when the dog would come in they would sometimes just be shipped right to the back to the youth and to be euthanized. Like it wouldn't even have a shot. Mm -hmm. And especially if it was a senior dog, it was like to the back. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he was saying it got to be so bad that he just said, I'm done. Like I have to, uh, he started a rescue and he has over 32 seniors dogs at his house. Right. Mm -hmm. now. When I went to go visit him, I was just like, this is like a nursing home. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> the, the sound that you hear and the, I'm like, geez, Louise. like I'm like, wow. <laughs> But you you fall in love with with like the, the people like you know what I mean like you're like how how did you like I mean how do you do this like 32 seniors I'm like <laughs> like how do you wake up every morning and not wet the bed like just yourself like you don't know what you're waking up to um, I do want to shout out a few people Raza uh, <laughs> who's on the feed she is from Rescue Me um, down by you guys actually she's actually in the Redlands actually no it's not by you she's a little farther but um, she is one of the funniest rescue owners I've ever met. If you guys ever want to hook up with the funniest rescue owner, rescue me, Raza is one yeah. of them. She, um, she has a segment every Friday that I make her do, because when I went to her house, when you first walked into her house, I, I smelled something delicious. I'm like, what the hell is this, Paula Dean's kitchen? Like, what is this? And um, she cooks, she has 30, she actually has like 20 or something dogs in her house, but she cooks every meal for them. And I'm like, okay. Like, what are we doing? So I made her, I made her do a cooking segment. I was like, you have to, you got to do something every Friday to show people how you cook for your animals. But, um, but that was just, that was just a funny, like, I was like, geez, but no, um, yeah, there is, a, there is a, how to cook for their animals. what's that? People always want dog food recipes all the time. I hear it all the time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I yeah. cook for myself first, but I would like someone to cook for me. <laughs> That'd be good. Me too, right? I, I almost got to, I almost had a, went up for adoption just to stay at her house. Um, but like, I was just like, it's crazy. But no, um, yeah, that's my, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is the message being out there, but being out there a lot more aggressively. Like I think people try really hard. There's a lot of advocates out there and people that are blogging about stuff and trying to get the message out to the community. But it's like, you got to, I'm trying to find a way to be louder. <laughs> like I'm loud just because I'm from Jersey. Don't comment. You had the head tilt. That was the head tilt. I saw the head tilt. <laughs> Actually, one of the girls on our board is from uh, New Jersey also. Is she loud? Hobo can or something like that. Like, oh, what is Bar the Barnegat or something? There's Hobark, there's Hoboken, there's Barnegat, Barnegat Bay. Um, but yeah, she. those are nice areas. Those are real nice areas, though. Um, so tell me, do you guys, do you have a website for uh, Juno's Humane? We do. See, <laughs> What do you want? Okay, so I make the website, right, in WordPress, but I had a little problem, and then I started getting a lot of dogs, and so I've been trying to build the the, the site back up. So it is it is live now. Okay. Um, not perfect. It's a work in progress, but yes, we have a website. Do you know the name of work? Do you know? I'm going to write it down here in the comments. Yeah, one blog post. <laughs> it's Sage. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. There will be more. Stay tuned. <laughs> Listen, listen right now. I'll tell you a story and please don't laugh at the story either. So I, I know what you're going through. 
So I um when I was 25, I started a dating site called You Must Love Dogs Dating. It was a dating site for singles. <laughs> if you laugh at me, I, you laughed. So after like six months of it being launched, Ellen DeGeneres mentioned me on her show. And it went from like 100 mm -hmm. members to like uh, almost a million members. It was like crazy, crazy. If you Google my name and you'll see this, all these interviews I had across the country for because she did, she mentioned me. I built this thing over WordPress. I learned WordPress over like YouTube basically. Yeah. And I had like just this like homepage. I had little boxes, which were the profiles and I shared the hell out of it. And like one morning I woke up and it was like, boom, like it was, it was, it was crazy. I, I, but I'll tell you right now, I think the the most um, intellectual people are the people that learn things, you know, themselves, basically. So, like, I, I kudos to you if you're if you're building it. Are, are you like at all trained for WordPress or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, WordPress is open source, so you can learn whatever you want. You just have to watch the video and then do it. Watch the video, do it. Yeah. Do you know how people don't do that though? <laughs> they don't have websites. Oh, they pay people to have their websites. That's right. They don't want to take the time to learn that stuff. That's another. That's another discipline that you're kind of you're under. You undermine a lot of stuff, Jen. You have to do a lot of stuff mm -hmm. to get the end goal to get the dog healthy and adopted. <laughs> but I'm saying that's why I always say, and people always try to like underplay because I think you're very you're very modest. Like you're underplaying all the you know the selfless stuff you're doing right now. Like you building a website. Nobody wants to learn how to build a website. I promise you. I've told people it's not hard to build an open source website. Just like you're saying. HTML, Joomla. There's a lot of different areas that you can look, teach yourself, whether it's WordPress or Joomla, or even just what's the other one that it's like a free Wix. Yeah. Wix. Yeah. That's the other one. I mean, there's so many. And like, I've had, I've had shelters ask me to like, we don't want to build a website. It's too much work. We don't know how to do it. And it's just like, if you took like a couple hours, it's like, it's not, yeah. even, it's not that big a deal. Um, but you know, people don't want to take the extra time. So like you said that uh, you kind of don't don't underestimate yourself you're doing a great job Jen. like you are you thank know, you yeah. so like, stories that i want to get on there that i haven't like they're right. all in my head still yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, uh, like you know i could speak as an outsider running a rescue seems like a ton of work um and at the end of the day it's it's so much of just you know having your hands on the dogs and really taking care of the dogs and you know, trying to talk to adopters and trying to talk to potential fosters and coordinating this and vet visits and that. It's so much, I think, that, you know, the time for marketing um, is just not there for a lot of rescues. Um, and the focus is always on helping the next dog. So it gets very, like, all-consuming. So. Yeah. I always try to, you know, because, like I said, and I don't mean to underplay shelters because I am partnered with a lot of them and I, I love them all, but they have a lot of employees. They have a lot mm -hmm. of Tears. They have a lot of resources. Yeah. You know? Like you said, you guys have, you know, it's, it's a lot that goes into having a rescue and especially you guys are doing it out of your home. We're foster based. Yeah. Okay. So like, yeah. So like, again, like you, there's so little, there's 24 hours is, is a lot. There's not a lot of time when you think about it, when you like to think about the day and especially you have to take care of the animals themselves. It's like, it's a lot that people don't know that you guys are doing. One of the things that I always thought was so weird to me is that some of the rescues have the same amount of animals as some shelters I know. And I'm like, and those, even though those shelters aren't state funded either, but like, why, why do you think it is a very hard thing to get state funding? You need time to fill out all the applications and, you know, apply for grants, you need time. Yeah. And there's a lot of dogs to save. So when you know you, when these rescue um, directors are thinking about, hmm, do I go to the shelter and save this next dog that really needs help, or am I going to sit here and fill out the application for the grant? It's like you know, yep, it's not really a question for them. I took my SATs in high school, so I was I'm kind of not not that not too bright, but I don't know why I took that test. That was a waste of time. But like. Why is the grant writing so hard? I haven't seen it yet, but everyone keeps telling me how complicated it is. So you basically have to have outcomes. You need to have, you know, stories, the ones that I'm going to put on the website when I'm done, like those stories you send in to the grants because they want to see what you're doing. They want, I mean, in, these are not grants from the government. These are grants from like Nine Play or like nonprofits who somebody left money to 
for this purpose. You know, when I first started this, I thought, oh, I'm gonna get like a whole bunch of government funding and I'm gonna save all these animals. And they laughed at me. They were like, you know. <laughs> And I was like, oh, like really? They're like, yeah, you need private, you need private uh, donors, or you're just going to be batting your head against the wall. So it's and so it's basically, um, it's public support, but it's not. I mean, we had what was that vote in West Palm Beach? We had it, um, it was to raise the tax by a penny, and that would support the shelter, or in or a sixteenth of the penny would go to the shelter. And everyone was like, "No, it's too much. It's too much." <laughs> you know, what a penny, like for a penny for the shelter, which didn't, even, I'm sure, went to some other thing. You know what I mean? But it's hard to get the general public, who doesn't really care that much about animals, to. Right to vote in and help for animal control. I and mean, we don't even have air conditioning at our animal control facility. That's just coming now. I think that people yeah. just didn't realize that the funding is not there. It's not there. If somebody has to do something about it or it's not well, gonna happen. Don't you think it's kind of funny that like, we can't, you said a penny. I always thought like, I always thought like if we were all taxed a dollar a month to own, just own one pet, not two for two pets, just a dollar for owning pets in general. Like with all the millions of people in this world, we can pretty much fix the problem basically fix the problem but we we have three tiers of netflix subscriptions right <laughs> you know like i always laugh at that because it's not bad, apple yeah. yeah think about all of this it's, stuff right out of mind. it's not in your face then what's that it, it's out of sight out of mind if it's not in people's faces all the time like they don't want they're not going to take the time to go research, you know, all this horrible stuff that's happening to dogs every day. I mean, it's nicer to not know about it. So, yeah. and it's funny too because I'm one of those people. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the story of? And this is a terrible story. I'm sorry to bring it up. The Ray Rice story. Mm -hmm. The guy that hit his girlfriend in the elevator that went viral. That that video yeah. that was like it was horrific. Right. You know, domestic violence has been happening so much in like the NFL for years, but we never actually stop to look yeah. at it until we see a video. Like we're yeah. like, oh my God. But with this kind of stuff, I've always said, and I know, you know, I know I get in so much trouble, but I've always said, I want to be the kind of person that kind of like does things differently in terms of like Richard Branson started Virgin Airlines by just doing a lot of P really weird PR moves, but he got it. You know what I mean? So like, I always said like, when people ask me, like, Chris, can you help save this dog? It's going to be euthanized in 72 hours. I'm like, I can put a post out there. I can go live. But unless you guys are going to let me go in there and talk about it on video, it's not going to work. Like, people aren't going to feel it. Like, they, got, they have to feel it. Like, pictures, there's too many pictures on social media, and it, and it floods too much. Like, people, you know, and I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm kind of tired of the, you know, being tagged with 99 other people and then yeah. urgent, 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 urgent. Like, you know, like Code Red, what the hell they're saying now. Have but you like, seen Sage's video that we made? The what? Video for Sage that we made. I don't think I saw it, but is it on your page now? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we put together a really cute video for her. And it's on the Facebook page, and it's also um, yeah. it's also on the website. Yeah, but I, but I do feel like it did a, you know, pretty good job of telling her story. Um, and, you know, having people really be able to see and feel what you know, this poor little dog went through. Oh, wow. And that's information in three months. I mean, it's pretty amazing. It's the one pinned to the top of your page, right? Yes. Is it? Guys, you got to check that out. It's Juno Humane Inc. on Facebook. Check out the pinned post about Baby Sage. I'm going to look at this when we're done with this, but it looks, it does look like just a picture alone is kind of telling. Um, <laughs> She's sleeping over here. She's all passed out. Yeah. Yeah. That picture, that picture is very telling. But guys, again, if you guys have just coming into this feed or you're watching this later, I'm with Lauren and Jennifer from Juno Humane Inc. in Hope Sound, Florida. I said it right, didn't I? Yes. Practice makes perfect. But no, one of the things I always wanted to do, and I got rejected right away. I'm one of those people that like, I'll just go for it until I get, I get rejected. If I get rejected like 20 times, I'm like, all right, 21st time is going to work. Um, there was a um, an uh. Animal services, animal services around here that wanted me to help save an animal. And I, they euthanize a lot. And I had said, guys, why can't I come out with a segment that's kind of like, I hate to say it, but it's called like death row. I was like, when you guys know how long it's going to take, if the dog's going to be gone this Friday, I will go in there and I will literally sleep in the cage for that five days to save that dog. Someone's going to come and save that dog. And they're like, oh, we can't let them, we can't let them publicly know that we euthanize. And I'm like, 
all right guys like you can let me you can let me know in private messenger but you can't like you know let's let's do something here but it's like they until like i always say until they want to get out of their way their own way like it's going to remain a problem yeah there's a lot of red tape i mean i started just volunteering at the local shelter and you know it's it's tough because i felt like at a certain point like i'm not really making much of you know, difference because yep. you only have so there's only so much that you can do. Yep. Um, so that's when I got into fostering because I was like, I'd rather just take it all out of here. Now, do you usually, um, cause you mentioned Miami Dade, is that, cause I've always heard from the, the experience I have in my, in the Miami area with some of the shelters, a lot of them say that they have a huge problem with overpopulation there. Um, do you, do you pull from there because of that? Um, we pull from Miami because uh, my heart is in cruelty cases. Yeah. I want those dogs. I want those dogs. I want to make sure that doesn't happen to them again. Right. Um, and it is worse there than here. Um, yep. So I pull from there. And I also, um, it's, it's a, being a rescue partner with Miami Dade is easy. Yep. You place the hold via email, you go there, they give you the dog, you go to the vet. It's just like that. You know, there's not a lot of drama or just anything. You just get your dog and go. Um, I recently, actually, just the other day, we got approved with Broward County, so now we can rescue from Fort Lauderdale as well. Oh, cool. uh, it's a little bit better, uh, but still lots of animal cruelty there. Um, and it's not, don't be fooled by thinking that Palm Beach doesn't have animal cruelty. They do a lot. Mm -hmm. We do a lot. We just don't see it as much. Like, we yeah. don't broadcast it. Mine was like, here's this dog. This is what happened. Come get it, please. Where. Yep. You know, our county like keeps it kind of on the down low a little bit. Hush, hush. We don't want to upset anybody. Yep. You know, so it's the reason we have more dogs from Miami is because we know they're there and we can get them quickly. Right. I um one of the things that we we kind of brushed over a little bit earlier, which I I I'm running into all over the place, um, but I'm hoping to fix it because I I love having a channel like my, I'm trying to get million subscribers on George's Way Charities YouTube because I want to eliminate the drama, like. I've visited so many rescues and shelters in Florida and there's a lot of drama. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I laugh at some of it because like, okay, for example, like there's a couple, there's 12 shelters here in Tampa that I work with um, a lot. And I, I had the County commissioner kind of get on the phone of Tampa and with a couple of the directors, cause I want to start, I wanted to start cross promoting. Like if you have a dog that's been at the shelter for like a year, like 10 miles down the road and 20 miles down the road, you have a shelter that has a whole different set of eyes in terms of social media and 20,000 people. I was like, why can't I take that dog and put it on that page? And yeah. like, this was like a Jerry Springer kind of thing where I, yeah. I, 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 I brought this up and I'm not gonna lie, but I'm, I'm serious. This is how it happened. I, I brought it up and the woman from one, the woman, <laughs> I'm, <just kidding. laughs> here it comes. I'm stretching. I'm here. Well, the one woman who owned this rescue or shelter and this guy right here, when I mentioned it, she got up and she's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not putting any of that dog, that guy's dogs on my page. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, can we, like, can we, you guys want to go out on a date and just get over with? Like, what, what's the problem? Like, what's the problem with these? Like, what's the problem here? Like, there's so much of that. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, I got to convince these people that, like, get, you know, if you guys are like high school sweethearts, didn't work out, just get over it. Like, who cares? Like, you know, but, yeah, I've I've tried to eliminate that, but that's why I said I said this this community of like adoptions and stuff like that needs its own like YouTube channel. I, I think it's like it'll eliminate where this dog is, who this dog comes from, or something like that. I just I just know that it'll eliminate because now people are sending me animals to put on like a YouTube channel or just highlight. And I'm like, that's great. They didn't have to tell that person or get you know, go over that person or like, you know, it didn't go through any channel of like, oh no, don't highlight that dog, Chris. That person is terrible. It's like it's like oh, you know, <laughs> but like, yeah, I think I, the drama part is what gets me a little peed off, yeah. kicked off a little bit because I'm just like, I mean, there, there's four legged friends over there. We're not, we're not, we're forgetting about, we're forgetting about them. And yeah. I'm like, you know, like, but like some people will send me things and some of the people that send me things, they're like, oh, don't send Chris that. He doesn't look at it because they're right. I don't look at it. Like, it's like if somebody's like, Chris, you'll never believe what this person is doing. And I'm like, did you say person or pet? Like, just give me the, you know, what happened? Like, and. I just don't get involved. How, I mean, do you, are you guys kind of the same mentality where it's kind of like, yeah, just, just leave it with the four legged friends. Yeah. We, we don't want any part of it, you know, and it's hard to escape it on social media. Yeah. 
because it's everywhere. And, and then add alcohol, like the crazy rescue police are drinking. And then it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's for crazy. example, like when we rescued Sage, we had a whole bunch of these people from somewhere else saying that we were like a bad rescue and we were going to do bad things and we weren't going to take her to the bat and we were like all this weird stuff. And we're like, what? Who are these people? Yeah. You know, they're like self-proclaimed rescue police. They want to tell you that you're doing a bad job. And yeah. We're like, we don't want you to talk to us at all. So just <laughs> you know, <keep> yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so I want to mention Michelle um, Benoit is on the feed right now. She is the director of Dog Tolly Dog Rescue down by actually Somewhere near you guys, I guess. I heard of it. Yeah. yeah. She um I went there last two weeks and they have a lot of big dogs. And one of their things was they wanted me to go tug of war with a, a gigantic oh, wow. kid. Oh, I, did, I, I, won, I won that one though. I did win. I beat I'm gonna tell you that video. I beat that dog. But um there was another competition they had for me there. I had to, to get a bunch of like a bag of Skittles out of one of those those con wobblers. With my like, with my face, yeah. I didn't do so good. That dog beat me on that one. <laughs> yeah, he beat me pretty good. On treat ball, you had to get. This is too funny. I have to. I gotta study that video. It was serious. I got on the ground. You know what they made me do when I first got there? They were like, "Oh, a lot of our dogs are good with men," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." And they were just like, "Can you?" Wear this? Cage. I was like, "Can you?" They were like, "Can you wear this?" And I'm like, "Okay." I had this big. Wig. I had this big wig on. I had a dress on. I had. It was. It was you fooled them. Uh, <laughs> Not. I, I no, I did. I gotta show you. The, I I was a pretty good looking girl though. Um, That's look, look, at, look at this picture. Hold on. Where is it? Um, where did it go? Oh, nice. Very handsome woman. I know. Caitlyn Jenner's got nothing on me. Um, but hey, surprise, surprise, guys. You guys laughed at me before this feed. We're already past forty five minutes. Didn't oh. that go fast? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I will not take up any more of your time, but I do appreciate you guys coming on the feed here and talking to me about, about what you guys are doing down there. I think you you both are extremely selfless. I don't care what Jen said about you, Lauren, before this. You're okay. okay. But um, I hope that everybody can also subscribe to George Way Charities and also follow Juno Humane on Facebook and Instagram. Um, also, go to her website and make fun of her for it being half complete. Um, just kidding. No. What's going to be done? What? When's your website going to be done? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. What's going on here? What's happening? I don't no. know. Well, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, no everything you're doing to bring awareness to the dogs. Appreciate it much. No problem. And I hope that you guys, because I do a lot, I do these interviews probably like once, twice a month with every rescue I partner with. I, I hope that you guys want to do it again sometime. Um, don't laugh at me. Don't say no. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> I heard nothing. Um, but again, guys, this is Judo Humane Inc. This is Jennifer and Lauren. They came on here. Thank you, guys. We're going to share this like crazy so you guys get a lot more exposure. I appreciate it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank later, you. later.